Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is, of course, the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. A late night Clarets Daily News, as it always is on Friday, uh, but a little bit later than usual. It's half past ten at night, and I just wanted to make sure that everything was done and there weren't going to be any official announcements late at night that would make this video then out of date because of course last night we announced something quite late i think it was at 10 p.m um and we'll just quickly go through that actually yesterday of course yesterday the show came out at around 1 p.m so we covered the sanderberg move to fulham and that was made official by burnley football club yesterday on thursday by the way when i say yesterday i'm referring to thursday at 10 a.m they also officially announced that anna Zorora would join RC Lens. They also announced that Oberfeme would move to Plymouth Argyle, and that was around 10 p.m., I think. I just remember being in bed anyway. I know that much. I was in bed when it happened. Um, and they also announced, in more positive news, uh, that Joe Worrell would be signing from Nottingham Forest. So they're all full-on officially announced, and that was all yesterday. So it was quite a busy day on the official account yesterday. I did feel sorry uh, for the admin and the social media team. We announced that Sander Burge would be leaving, Zorori would be leaving, Obafemi would be leaving, but Joe Worrell would be coming in. And then today, we finally officially announced that Johan berg Gummerson would be joining. Um, I can't remember the team name, but it's in the Saudi Arabia League, the Saudi League Pro. Um, so yeah, we knew that anyway. Um, all of them were pretty much covered, apart from the Obafemi thing. Obafemi came... Not out of nowhere, but um, there were some murmurings yesterday and, and the day before, but nothing really official or from any great sources. Then all of a sudden, um, yeah, it was just pretty much announced. Uh, I did see a few things on the Plymouth side first and then a few murmurings on our side. And then all of a sudden, bang, 10 p.m. I think it was, like I said, last night that uh, the club officially announced it. But let's get into the Joe Worrell official transfer then um, because obviously I want to start with a bit of positivity and we've covered Sander and that's probably the main story from the last couple of days um, because he was our player of the year last year. Um, but let's talk about incomings. Joe Worrell has officially joined from Nottingham Forest. He's an experienced defender, 27-year-old. He's done it in this league before. I think he captained Forest when they won the playoff final. Um, controversially against Huddersfield Town a few years back and he has obviously played for them in the Premier League since then as well but he's fallen out of favour over the last few years um, so obviously they, that's why they've sold him and he's come to Burnley and, he, and he's, he's already shown that he can do it in this league so in my opinion it's a very good bit of business from Burnley Football Club um, but uh, yeah they said on their official website when they announced it that Burnley Football Club are delighted to announce the arrival of experienced centre-back Joe Worrell on a four-year deal from Nottingham Forest for an undisclosed fee subject to the standard approval from EFL and the FA. The 27-year-old defender who has over 200 appearances across the Premier League and Championship with Nottingham Forest also experience in the SPL with Rangers and at Besiktas in the Turkish Super League. Upon signing for the Clarets, Worrell, and I like this interview by the way, I would recommend watching it on the official club account YouTube, obviously after you've watched this video, if you haven't already. Um, but just to give you a gist of what he said, um, he said, I'm very happy to be a Burnley player. I can't wait to be involved and help them get back to the Premier League. It felt like home as soon as I walked through the door and that's what I want it to be. I'm really looking forward to getting to know the people in and around the club, but also the fans. I want to strike up a bit of a rapport with then I'm just looking forward to playing and winning games. That's the main ambition for me. Getting body, uh, sorry, getting everybody on board with what we're trying to do and the club and and enjoy it as well. So yeah, I mean I'm, I'm happy with this one. Um, I do think it means that Dava Roche is off though. I think we've brought him in as a Dara replacement. Obviously, there's nothing official on that yet. We will get into the speculation surrounding Dara later in the show. But yeah, Joe Worrell is officially a Burnley player and he joins from, like I said, Nottingham Forest on a four-year deal. Elsewhere, as I've already mentioned, the club have announced several outgoings in the last 48 hours. Um, obviously, we started with Sander, but Sander was covered on yesterday's show. So what I'll do, I'll rattle these ones off quickly rather than giving them all their own little section just because A, it's quicker and B, I'm, I'm sick of talking about outgoings if I'm honest with you. Um, but Oberfeme announced late last night he has officially left the club on loan um, but he's joined Plymouth Argyle on the club website. Burnley Football Club said 
Burnley Football Club can confirm that Michael Oberfemi has joined Plymouth Argyle on a season-long loan. The Republic of Ireland striker spent the second half of last season on loan at Millwall and now heads to Home Park to play for Wayne Rooney's Championship side. We wish Michael all the best for the season ahead. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the ins and outs are of the loan, whether they have an obligation or an option on it or anything like that. Um, I've not even looked into it, if I'm being honest with you. Michael Oberfemi, um, he seems like a great guy that I'd love to go out for a pint with, um, or, or several. Um, I don't think I'd be on his level, to be fair, so he probably wanna, wouldn't want to go out with me. Um, but I don't think he's going to be missed, if I'm being honest with you. I don't think he'd have played much or at all. Um, he's, he's okay at this level um, for like a mid-table, bottom-half championship side, in, in, in my opinion. But I don't think he's shown enough in his time at Burnley that he that he's he's the striker that we need him to be. Uh, will he displace Lyle Foster, for example? No chance. And I probably even have um, Vegost ahead of him. I, I suspect Vegost will leave, and it, and even Jay Rodriguez ahead of him. Um, and then pretend, pretend, and obviously there's Hontondry as well. Now I don't know enough about him to comment. To be fair, but he's looked okay in, in his cameos. Um, so Obafemi. Like the guy, but I'm I'm not sure that it's it's a big deal that he's left. If I'm honest with you, um, which weirdly enough, what seemed to be the one that tipped a lot of fans over the edge late last night. I think it's because there's been a few outgoings announced in one day, and and fans just lost their heads. But um, it was quite funny to see fans lose their head over a striker that probably wouldn't have played five minutes for us this season. Um, elsewhere, um, Zorore has left uh, officially, full on gone, not on loan or anything. He's, he's made the permanent move to RC Lens in France. Uh, Burnley Football Club on their website said, Burnley Football Club can confirm that Anna Zorore has left the Clarets to join league earned side RC Lens for an undisclosed fee. The Moroccan joined Burnley ahead of the 2022-23 Championship season and played an integral role in sealing promotion. We would like to wish Anas all the best for the future and thank him for his efforts Sorry, uh, during his time at Turf Moor. Now, this one hurts, I think, a little bit. I, I don't suspect he would have played overly too much for us this year, but it hurts in the sense that I think a lot of Burnley fans were quite fond of Zorore. He came into the club and did very well in his first season, or at least in the first half of the first season. Scored against Blackburn, got an assist against Blackburn. I know I spoke about it yesterday, but obviously just go into it into it again for those of you that that didn't see yesterday's show. Um, I do feel like he played very well in that game, uh, and then that's when he became a, a lot of fan favourites as well. And plus, he had a great chant, and that always helps when a fan has a great chant. But it, it's sad to see him go. I, I don't think he was really given enough of a chance in the Premier League last season, but I think it set the tone um, when he got sent off ridiculously against Man City in the first game of the season. So I, I would have liked to have seen him more, uh, especially this season. I think he could have added something from the bench, um, but yeah, he probably wouldn't have played too much or, or wouldn't have been first choice, but I think we do lose a bit of, uh, lose a bit of depth now, now we've lost Soror. I think that's the thing that annoys me. Uh, according to Transfer Market, and according to Fabrizio Romano, I think he tweeted this a couple of days ago, we have got €9 million Euros for an ass. So a good bit of business, to be fair. I think we've done well to get €9 million Euros for him. And that's just obviously the way the model is these days. Everyone's for sale at the right price. And, and, if, and if the correct bid comes in, as it obviously has done for an ass, then the club will sell. Um, I'm not sure. I've mentioned already um, JBG earlier in the show, um, but we'll just quickly get on that as well now and see what the club had to say on that. But of, of course, JBG is now officially um, uh, an Al Obara player. Probably butchered that, as everybody who, who watches this show knows I do like to butcher the names and the pronunciations. Um, but Burnley Football Club said on their website, Burnley Football Club can confirm that midfielder Johan berg Gummerson has joined Saudi Pro League side Al-Obara. Oh, no, sorry. Al-Araba. So I did butcher it. Um, for an undisclosed fee. After joining the club in 2016 from Charlton Athletic, the 33-year-old has been an integral figure within the Claridge dressing room over the past eight seasons at Turf Moor. Saturday saw Gummerson play his 200th league game for the Clarets and the Icelandic midfielder signed off in style after curling home the fifth goal of the game in his final match for the club. Following over 225 appearances, 
UEFA Europa League qualification, two top 10 Premier League finishes and a Championship League title. JBG will always remain a fan favourite. Burnley would like to thank Johan for his contribution and commitment over the years and wish him all the best for the future. Again, this one hurts, probably more so than any of the other ones because everybody loves Johan. And as the article does say, he is a very big, or was a very big part of the dressing room. I just find it a little bit strange that he's come back and then left. I understand that obviously the, the Saudi interest wouldn't have been there when he originally came back and then it's something that's developed over the last few weeks. Um, and But then to make that big tweet, I've got nothing against him, by the way. I just find it strange. I'll just do the big tweet of I'm not effing leaving sort of thing and then just to leave six weeks later. It just, just all looks a bit bizarre. Um, look, I, I know people call Saudi and stuff for the you know the the social things and all the stuff that goes on over there and it's not the sort of podcast to get in well sure to get into it but for me I kind of understand it one last payday um, put it this way if the Saudi Pro League approached me and said would you like to do a podcast on the Saudi Pro League and we will double your wages which I believe what they kind of they said to you I'm just not the podcast bit then I'd be I'd be like yes when do I start other people will obviously have different opinions and that's fine. I'm not going to get into it here. Um, but again, we lose a bit of depth with Johan leaving. He would have played a part, not so much, wouldn't have been the starter, but would have done what he did on Saturday against Cardiff and come off the bench to hopefully get a couple of goals. But yeah, we're losing more depth and it hurts because of how much we like Johan and he was a massive part of the changing room. So yeah. Johan has joined the Saudi Pro League, Obafemi has joined Plymouth Argyle and Zorora has joined RC Lens. Now I'm going to move on from the official announcements and apologies if I've missed one. I feel like I may have missed one. There's been that many over the last day or two um, that I can't remember them all. I've, I've been through the Twitter um, of the official club um, but I still kind of feel like I've missed one so apologies, for, apologies if I have. I'm going to move on now to the speculation surrounding Dara O'Shea. Obviously Burnley play Newcastle, not Newcastle, that's incredibly offensive to any Sunderland fan that may watch this, they probably won't, hopefully don't, uh, but Burnley play Sunderland up in Sunderland tomorrow, obviously at the time of you're watching this it'll probably be today, um, and there are some rumours that Dara O'Shea will not be available due to speculation, now this isn't anything that I've heard from any contacts, it isn't anything that's been reported by a good source if I'm being honest with you. You know me, like I said, if I do sometimes say that these are just rumours, I'll make it clear that these are just rumours and these are just rumours on Twitter and other places as well. But apparently Dora Rocher will not be available tomorrow and that's because he is looking at now moving to Ipswich. It's been interesting, this Dora situation, because at first it was looking like he'd moved to Brentford, then Ipswich got involved, then again this is something that I heard from a good source he then told Ipswich he wasn't interested in Ipswich and he was looking at Brentford. Since then, Brentford have signed a centre-back and have cooled their interest in Dara, which made me think we might have a chance of keeping him. Then Wolves came in and then apparently he was interested in the Wolves thing, again from the same person that told me about saying no to Ipswich. Uh, I'm sorry, once in Brentford. Um, and then Wolves will not make the fee. Wolves have decided that they will not pay the fee. So then Wolves have now killed their interest in Dara. So now he is saying to Ipswich that maybe he's interested. Again, this could all be agent talk and this is all just speculation, like I said, and, and no real official sort of like uh, good sources reporting it. But it, it just looks a bit strange to me that he's, he's said to Brentford, yes, said to Ipswich, no, said to Wolves, yes, then Brentford and Wolves have pulled out and now we're saying yes to Ipswich. Again, I feel like Dora does care about Burnley Football Club, even even though a lot of people give him stick. Just from stuff I've heard for the, from the changing room and things like that, I feel like this might be his agent. I'm not sure. It could be It could be Dora, I'm not sure. It could be desperate to stay in the Premier League and, and you know that, that's fair enough. I feel like he would have been another player that benefit, benefited from the year in the Championship, but it was the West Brom captain in the Premiership, in, in the Championship, to be fair. So he probably feels he's, he's, he's done enough in the Championship and, he, and, and he's earned the right to play in the Premier League. I just feel with the amount of mistakes he made last year in the Premier League that he could have benefited from a year in the Championship. But yeah, um, according to um, Alex Crook on Talk Sports, he reckons that Ipswich are now the front runners, or I think his actual words were in the box seat to sign Dara because Wolves pulled out and because Brentford have signed somebody else. And now apparently 
The rumours then probably came from that tweet uh, that he won't be available tomorrow. But if he's not available tomorrow, I think Joe Worrell could step in easily. But again, there's some rumours from other places. Again, nothing you know, from a good source. It's all just speculative rumours at the minute um, that Worrell may not be ready just yet. But um, fingers crossed he is if Dora's not available. Fingers crossed Dora just plays because you can play without, you know, even though you're about to move, you can play. I know um, Zorori didn't and Sander didn't. Um, so it's going to be, it'd be interesting to see what, what the club say tomorrow, whether they say he's got a quad issue, like they said with Sander, or he's got an illness like they did with Zorori. Um, but yeah, that's all just speculation at the minute, to be fair. But apparently Dora Rocher will not be available. And it'll, the, the team sheet at two o'clock tomorrow will tell us a lot, right? If, if Dora is available and he's playing and he's starting, and I think that tells us that a lot of this has just been agent talk or you know Twitter speculation or something like that. So keep a keen eye on the team sheet tomorrow at 2pm when it comes out for Burnley's trip to Sunderland. Because if Dara's not on it, then all of this is probably true. Final one from me. I want to talk about Zeke Amdune. Now, again, there's been no official like good sources talking about this one. And that's what I want to say because... Uh, a random account tweeted something. I'll just quickly get it up on my screen now. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Uh, and basically, a lot of Burnley fans lost their head about it. And I just thought it was all a little bit much. Uh, here it is. Uh, it's from Andre. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that last name. But he says, exclusive Zeki Amdune wants to leave Burnley by the end of the summer transfer window, if possible. Benfica are seriously considering the striker. However... The transfer fee is quite high. Um, just for full transparency, this guy has 361 followers on Twitter. And now I know that's not a massive indication of, of reliability, but I think when somebody has that little and just tends to put things on Twitter that never seems to happen and just always talks about random stuff like that and just wants to build up a following by being, you know, this transfer ITK guy. I always find it a little bit suspicious um, and I am not believing it at all. I'm not, I'm not saying that Zeki won't go. He may well do. I think it would be stupid to let him go if I'm being honest with you. Um, but obviously we know now that when a bid comes in for the right amount, players will leave. But I feel like he's one of the players that we need to be keeping hold of. He will rip the championship up. And if we can play him in that number 10 behind Foster and then Corley Osho on one side and Mitinu on the other side and maybe some new incomings rotating in and out of the side, that is a brilliant front four. And then even though we potentially are losing Dara Rocher, Worrell, Esteve, Bayer, Ekdal and the other centre-backs are all more than capable as well at the back and then in the midfield we still have a decent midfield so Zeki is quite important to me and, and Zeki is one of the ones that I think we need to keep and at the minute I'm not losing my head over this because it is just this one particular account with 361 followers now some people will say that it was then picked up by another account which was kmedia underscore ch uh, and they then said Zeki Amdouni is close to joining Benfica uh, alone with option to buy is under consideration the amount requested by Burnley is around 4 million plus 18. That's not going to happen. I'm sorry, that's just not going to happen. The current offer is a little lower. Uh, there is still a disagreement of around a million. So they're only offering 3 million up front. We'd be stupid, utterly, utterly stupid to let Zeki Amdouni go for 3 million euros up front. And again, by the way, this, this account, just for full transparency, this account has 4,000 followers, well, ju just under 5,000 followers. For full transparency, again, I have 14.3 thousand followers and I'm not reliable. I do not pretend to be reliable. And I am just a, a middle-aged, overweight man that does podcasts in his spare room and I've got 14,300 followers on Twitter. So it's not a great indication is what I'm saying. But if if, if we have that much and then these only have four or 5,000 and the guy only has 361 People keep asking me about Zeke. I don't know why people ask me about stuff. I think it's because I do these shows and people know I'm constantly looking at Twitter and stuff rather than thinking I'm in the know because I'm not. But I have seen no good source report that Zeke Amdune either wants to leave Burnley or is about to leave Burnley. These are the only two reports that I've seen about Zeke Amdune and I do not trust them at all. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. Like like I said, they may well end up being correct. Um, 
is he? I mean, Benfica's a, a good club. I was going to say, is he really good enough for Benfica? I'd say he probably is in terms of technical ability. Um, but again, it'd have to be an offer that we want um, to, to let Zeki go for. And four million euros it is not going to happen, even if it's you know eighteen then later down the line. But yeah, I can't see it. But just to let you know, some very unreliable sources are reporting that Zeki Amdouni wants to leave Burnley. But like I said, that'll be it from me. Instead of doing a separate goodbye, I'll just do it now. And obviously, massive game tomorrow or today, whenever you're watching or listening to this against Sunderland. Keep it like I said already. Keep a close eye on the team sheet. See who's in it. If Zek is not in it, then potentially he's probably off. If Dora O'Shea is not in it, then again he's probably off. Um, I've kept my cool recently with all these outgoings because we we needed to trim the fat out of the squad. But a lot of them, Sanderberg and Wilson Orderbear apart, aren't really first teamers. Uh, and Sanderberg hadn't played a minute this season, and we've been fine without him. Um, so I've been keeping my cool because a lot of them are fringe players or players considerably out of favour. We have lost some depth admittedly, but we still have quite a lot of depth. Um, we've got 10 centre-backs, for example. All right, the, the, the depth isn't the best balanced depth in the world because we only have one natural right winger um, in the side at the minute, and that's Manuel Benson. It looks like he's off, but I do feel like Vitinho will be the one playing in that position a lot this season because of the system, because it turns into a back five with Vitinho dropping in there, uh, which is something that Benson can't do um, or we haven't seen do very well. And I think that's the reason why he doesn't get in the side anymore, uh, whether it be with Vincent or with Scott Parker. Um, but yeah, if, if we then lose Dara and we then lose Zeki Amduna, then I myself will be getting a bit worried. But fingers crossed we can keep hold of them too. I think Dara... Just losing Dara I'll be okay with because Warrell's here now and as I've said, we've got 10 centre-backs. So I would like to keep Dara but again, I'm not going to lose my cool if we if if we sell him. Uh, but but if we if we get rid of Amduna, then I, I feel like we're going to... That, that front four that sounds really good suddenly doesn't sound as good and looks a little bit disjointed. But yeah, um, that's it from me. I'll be back on Monday potentially with a new... Claret's Daily News. I am actually quite busy this week with work. I think I'm working every single day, 12 hours every single day. And obviously being self, some of you will do that as a full-time job. So I'm not for one second saying it's hard work, but it, it'll be busy to do that and this, uh, hard work to do that and this. So you may not see me as much on the Claret's Daily News show this week because I'll obviously have to do podcasts and stuff for the, for the Blackburn game. There's not going to be much content surrounding the Wolves game, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get a Claridge Daily. I should be able to get one in on Monday, doing a roundup of the weekend's news. Hopefully there's not much to say, though. But then later in the week, I may not get too much. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everybody for listening. And we'll see you next week.